That'd be great. Thank you. And we are having a presenter tonight, uh, Dr. Bob McCauley, and he is an entrepreneur of the watershed uh, business in the North Lansing. And we all got his address and information in our announcement for tonight's meeting. And so I would just, uh, I would like to welcome Dr. Bob tonight. And we're, ex we're excited to hear about his book that he has written and he said when he first came out with it that it says everything he could possibly say uh, and how and also if we would read it we would know everything that he knows no we wouldn't know everything he knows but he would <laughs> we would know <laughs> enough to fun. have some success at following his advice so and uh, he was very it was very clear in the announcement that he feels if we do, we will get results. So I'd like to, I think everyone's wondering what in your book, uh, maybe some of the things you think are the most important things to, to share. There's things that people don't value very highly that you value quite highly. And uh, so I guess what are some things, we hope to hear some things that we might not hear otherwise um, from somebody that's uh, not uh, uh, acquainted with uh, the word, but what is, or maybe, anyway, we, we hope that, uh, well, if you have a question, now here's the thing I wondered. If you have a question, uh, there is a place that we can go down at the bottom. This, it's like the chat thing, isn't there? Where someone can write in their question. Mm -hmm. Yeah, here on the right side. So it uh, looks like Cricket Lot has been writing the things that she's wanting other people to know, like Bob to know already on her chat side. So does everybody realize they can ask a question that way? And you can also just ask on the phone. So yeah, you can and just wait until you get the time. So we want to give Bob all the time that he wants to uh, give his presentation and then he'll tell us when it's time for a question. <laughs> right? Welcome, Bob. Oh, wait a minute. We can't hear you now. <laughs> did you do that? You didn't do that on purpose, did you? Can you unmute yourself? No, he's muted on video because if he's on the phone, it'll have feedback. So if he talks, he should be able to hear him on the phone. Oh, did you hang up your phone, Bob? Well, that's bizarre. Try unmuting then. No. You, your mute is still on. Okay, how's that? That's good. That's good. There we go. Okay. Good. So I can hear myself and then I got myself muted on the my, my phone, so. Oh, okay. That's why we couldn't yeah. hear you on the video. Okay. Yeah. All right. Cool. Go okay. for it. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm Dr. Bob McCauley. I own the Watershed Wellness Center uh, in Lansing. It's out uh, just past the airport, uh, about two miles west of the airport. Uh, I've been doing this for um, 28 years. I started out 20 years ago. I started out in the bottled water business. I've written a whole bunch of books on health and uh, natural health, uh, actually probably done around, I think this is my sixth book on health. And uh, I have hundreds of blogs and hundreds of videos. My, my YouTube is, uh, it's Watershed 11, or if you just go and si search for Dr. Bob McCauley and you'll find me in there. Uh, I'm a naturopathic doctor. I started out in the bottled water business. I didn't really even know what a naturopathic doctor was, but um, Little by little, people kept coming in with um, first ionized water. I'm going to discuss that. And then uh, uh, the uh, first, then it was, uh, I found out about spirulina and then I started adding chlorella and I'll talk about that. And then little by little over the years, I just kept learning things. And I saw Hiawatha was on here. Uh, she kind of introduced me, not exactly to raw foods, but she introduced me to sprouts originally. And, um, and then, uh, so what happened was uh, I just started looking at sprouts and go, why do I want to eat sprouts? And I found out, well, because of enzymes. 
And so then I looked into enzymes. I bought this book called, uh, by it's called Enzyme, uh, Enzyme Nutrition, Enzyme Therapy Nutrition. Dr. Howell wrote that, Edward Howell. And, uh, and then it just all made sense why I want to eat raw fruits and vegetables and not take vitamins and not try to be healthy. Um, I was kind of a lacto vegetarian at the time. And then I became a full vegan, you know, so I don't eat meat, fish, eggs, or dairy. And we'll discuss that. And um, so uh, that's kind of how I got going. And so it just, I didn't start out, boy, I'm going to be a naturopathic doctor. I'm just going to, you know, go into the bottled water business. And then it all happened from there. So I was very fortunate. I've been very fortunate, but I'm a hard worker. So I learned all this. And now here we are with this point. So um, here's my latest book, uh, The Cure in the Mirror, Nature's Protocol for Surviving Cancer. And your body can cure itself of any disease. You need to stop putting the wrong things into your body and start putting the right things into your body. And that's what this is all about. And that I can see it's always great to talk to this kind of a crowd here um, because you guys are obviously interested in health. Sometimes I go out to venues and these are not health minded people. And uh, some of them just can't believe what I'm saying, you know, and, and they don't believe it and they argue with me. But and that's fine. I, I, I like challenging questions and I'll explain everything to you from my point of view and why why you want to do what I suggest. Um, but I really, you know, I know that the human body uh, can cure itself of any disease. I guarantee you I'm one of the few people, if not the only person you'll ever meet in your life, that'll tell you with a straight face, uh, I'm not going to die of a disease. I know I'm going to die. I know I'm going to die when God wants to take me and that's it, but it'll be from an accident. It'll be murder or assassination but it will never be, you know, I would never commit suicide. That's a big mistake. And it won't be disease. So I have a lot of peace in my mind about that. Um, as far as, um, um, you know, I don't have to wake, I don't have to wake up at three o'clock in the morning and think, boy, one of those test results going to reveal, do I have this disease or that disease? I know I'm always healthy. And to say, for instance, if I were not healthy or something happened, I had a disease, I would know immediately how to correct it. But if I got sick and if I got cancer or any other disease, it would be because I'm not following my own health protocol. So um, I have a seven component health protocol and um, it, water, it starts with water. Water is the cornerstone of health. I promote alkaline ionized water. The reason I do that, promote alkaline ionized water, uh, which is made with a water ionizer, is because um, um, it has ionized, alkaline ionized water has all the same properties as raw fruits and vegetables, only it doesn't have any nutrients. So everything you'll find in a raw food, which is uh, three antioxidant qualities, uh, an abundance of electrons, a negative ORP, oxidation reduction potential that reduces the oxidation of the body. That's the most important term you can ever learn about health is ORP. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, because everything you put into your body either you it either, either accelerates uh, oxidation and therefore accelerates the aging process or reduces oxidation in the body and reverses it. So there's only two things in the world that can do that, reverse oxidation, and that's ionized, alkaline ionized water and raw fruits and vegetables. And that's why I'm a raw foodist. I'm probably 98% raw or whatever. And I try to always strive to be 100% raw. Um, today, I've just had some fruit and I've had spirulina and chlorella. Uh, for make sure I have my protein. So we'll discuss those. But um, that's the point of ionized water. It's also very alkalizing, just like raw fruits and vegetables, and very, very detoxifying, uh, extremely hydrating to the body because of the size and shape of the water molecule clusters, but also very, very uh, detoxifying because it gets into your cells and your, um, and your tissue and pushes out all the things that don't belong there, which we call toxins. So the main thing I always want to tell people, and it's in my book, is uh, HAD, HAD. That's the key to health, HAD. Hydrate your body, alkalize your body, detoxify your body. Get those things out of there that don't belong. So, um, and I do want to say, by the way, there's my book. It's on Audible. It's on my website. But not, my biggest accomplishment here and one of the toughest things I've ever done in my life was an audio version. So now it just came out two days ago. It's available on audible.com. So you can pick up a pick, pick up a copy there. I actually sent out an email to everybody. I responded to uh, uh, Phil's email and, uh, and I just sent out a copy or uh, emailed everybody on that list and showed you where you could get that link and go to it. So if you wanna listen, I like to listen to books. I'm, I'm a very busy guy, I'm a very hard worker. So I've always got something going in my ear as I'm working and usually it's a book. 
of some sort. So I love to listen to books and I really don't have the time to sit, always sit down and re read them. And if I like a book enough, uh, like, you know, any book, I will sit there with a highlighter. I'll buy the physical copy and I'll listen to it and I'll highlight it as I go if I really want to get into it. But yes, this will tell you exactly um, how you can cure yourself of any disease, including cancer. So very quickly, I'll just go through these very briefly. And then I'm going to tell you the beginning of my, just kind of the whole um, basis of my cancer protocol. I call it my cancer protocol, but my, my health protocol has seven components and they are alkaline ionized water, spirulina and chlorella, two types of algae, the strongest foods in the world, and they're 60% protein. So this is what we should use for our protein rather than animal protein. And then a diet of raw fruits and vegetables, exclusively raw fruits and vegetables. I'm a vegan. You don't eat meat, fish, eggs, or dairy. You use your spirulina and chlorella for your protein. And uh, then I highly promote probiotics, the friendly bacteria, and prebiotics, that's fermented foods of any kind. It's very, very easy to ferment foods. Uh, just takes water and salt. You can do that very shortly. I've done it many times. I do it all the time. Yeah. And um, yeah. so prebiotics, probiotics, because uh, all disease, all disease comes from our diet. So it's all about what you put into your body. So, um, and we'll get that in just a minute, but uh, then I promote uh, minerals, liquid angstrom minerals. Uh, I don't know if I have an example. Just to give you an idea, they come in a bottle like that. That happens to be copper, but I sell, there's 26 different minerals that are all in the right ratio. You take a, like a capful, put it under your tongue and hold it there as long as you possibly can. And, um, and then it absorbs directly into the bloodstream through the sublingual duct under your tongue. And this is dispersed throughout the body. Um, if you have questions later, I can go into details, but I cured myself of, of meningitis uh, um, back in 2012. I wrote a book about it called Silver the Miracle Mineral. It's on my website. It's on audible. It's on amazon.com. It's going to be on audible. Uh, that's my next book that I'm doing. But um, I, you know, I, uh, meningitis is a very serious disease. It's a 21% mortality rate. So your chances of dying are pretty high and brain damage is pretty high as well. And I got it from the mosquitoes in 2012. I'm sure it was from that. And uh, I got through 10 days of pure hell without any medications or anything. I didn't even know I had, a, I had an infectious disease and I didn't know at the time it was meningitis. If I had known, I, I guess maybe I would have gone to the hospital. I know just le get some care, but you know, I was even able to do all, everything with just my health protocol. I, I did a lot of fasting. Fasting is the healthiest thing you can do um, at any given time. And, uh, but I wasn't taking silver. It came back months later. It hit me. I, I had a little bit of silver with me. I took it. I was on a trip. I was overseas. I took it about a capful, just like that, that much, maybe a teaspoon. A t and I had about one and a half caps full left in this little tiny bottle. And, um, within hours, I mean, within minutes, I felt better within hours. I felt it was reversing. It reversed itself completely. So I detailed that. So this virus that we got now run around, the COVID is just a joke compared to meningitis. So this is a very serious disease and this is what you wanna use your body again, can cure itself of any disease. You gotta, you know, I had some antibodies in there uh, and that's what you wanna do, build up your immunity. It's all about the immune system. Um, so we have liquid angstrom minerals and then daily vigorous exercise. I promote that very heavily. Um, you know, I'm usually, what I'm doing right now at this time is working out downstairs in my basement or maybe going out for a run. But I, I work out very, very intensely every single day for 25 to 30 minutes. And, um, you know, it's just, it, it, it's an incredible immune system builder. Your blood is racing through your veins. Uh, it's cleansing your organs. It's uh, cleansing the blood. Um, and it just builds the body and builds the nutrients in our, you know, builds, builds our body and builds our health, our health in general in ways that nutrients can't. So really got to do that vigorous ex uh, daily exercise, but I never go more than 30 minutes. That's the absolute most because you're building up too much acidity and too many free radicals in the body and you won't be able to compensate for that. So it's not about, when I say physical active, physical daily physical activity, I'm talking about uh, you know cardiovascular to some point where you're, you're breathing and you're panting very hard. 
Um, and that's at your level. If that's walking, that's fine. If it's uh, fast walking, fine. For me, it's running. I get an elliptical. I'll, I'll do about three and a half miles in 20 minutes. So when I get off the phone here, I'll go downstairs. I'll hit my elliptical. I'll do some heavy late weight lifting. And then I'll jump in my far infrared sauna afterwards for, for 15 to 30 minutes, somewhere in there. We can talk about that too later. And then last but not least, number seven is a positive mental attitude. You gotta stay positive. You know, if if you do everything that I just suggested you do, but this is against you, you're gonna fail. But if you just have a positive mental attitude and I'm just gonna get through this disease without anything else, you got to, you're not gonna make it. You gotta have both. You have to have all all six components of those protocol, the my protocol really and, and get all that those nutrients to really achieve great health. Um, and really the kind of health people, most people just, uh, just dream about. So that's my overall health protocol. And then my, um, my cancer protocol, let me describe that to you very quickly. So what that is, is, um, well, first, what I want to do is in the, the reasons I do this, I can kind of explain to you as I go through this, but first of all, what I want to do is I want to kill, I want to go through a digestive purge. I want to kill everything in your digestive tract and everything in your blood. I want to, um, I want to, uh, you know, cleanse the blood and of any viruses, bacteria, yeast, mold, and fungus, and same with, uh, your digestive tract. Now, this is if you have cancer. So I'm big into probiotics. I take probiotics with every single meal. I take digestive enzymes with every single meal, but, um, you know, that's me every single day, but I'm, I'm going to tell you right now, if you have cancer, you probably, you know, have a really bad digestive tract. And I guarantee that you are full of unwanted bacteria, viruses, yeast, mold, and fungus. Anybody who's ever been autopsied for cancer, you'll see there's mold in the body. Well, before you get mold, you're going to get, uh, you're going to get yeast and then you're going to get fungus. So mold is the last thing and that that's in your body. So you're being recycled you're being recycled back into, into nature through these uh, recycling agents, yeast, mold, and fungus. Well, cancer's a recycler too. You're being recycled you're, you know, because you're no longer part of nature. You know, you're, the nature's looking at your body and they're just not recognizing what's going on there. So you become, you've, you've become so polluted and so toxic that, um, you know, and again, let's go briefly. What is a toxin? A toxin is something that doesn't belong in the body. If there's something in your body that doesn't perform a function or isn't a nutrient, you need to get that thing out of there because that's all disease lives on toxins, all of it, all of it. So you need, and all disease, as I said earlier, comes from your diet. You don't inherit your diseases. Uh, you know, you inherit dietary habits and, uh, you know, we all eat the same foods. Well, we're Americans. So we live on, um, you know, a meat and potato diet. That's why I grew up in the sixties and I grew up on junk food. I mean, I, you know, wonder how sometimes I made it to adulthood, but my bones are made out of Coca-Cola and Oreo cookies. And that's all I ate when I was growing up. And it wasn't until I was in high school that I realized, you know, I, I was, a, I was in cross country and track and my coach said, don't eat this kind of junk. It's not good for you. And it's the first time I ever heard in my life from anybody that what you ate would make a difference and how you perform physically. I never heard of such a thing. I didn't think there was any, I never, you know, I didn't think anything could make you run faster. And then I found out there's certain foods could make you run faster and make you stronger. So that's kind of where it began for me. And then, you know, I went to India, I became a, a vegetarian. I've been a vegetarian 40 years this month, as a matter of fact, and uh, I haven't eaten meat and really, and then about 20 years ago, I became a vegan. So I don't eat meat, meat, fish, eggs, or dairy because there's nothing, there's nothing in an animal that we can't get from the plant world. You know, and I tell people all the time, animals are really just, when you eat, you live on an animal diet, meat, fish, eggs, or dairy, you're, you're just eating, that's just the middleman. You're eating the foods that ate the food. So the, the, the plants. So you look at the animals that are commonly eaten um, in our society, chicken, they're all vegetarians, beef, um, and, uh, fish, they're all vegetarians. We don't eat carnivores. Um, and, but yet we eat these things. So there you, you know, the, the beef is just eating the, the, the grain and, or say if, it, if it's a natural, uh, cow, the grass, because they're really grass animals are grass feeding uh, uh, grass grazers. And the idea that it would be feeding corn or grain or corn fed beef. I mean, this is just really ridiculous. And it's, and it's so contaminated, you know, animal protein at this point, you know, I, I always tell people 
Um, if, you know, if you really wanted to eat animals, you could eat it raw. You wouldn't have a problem. Raw meat, fish, eggs, or dairy. But we never eat those things. We always cook them. And, um, and, and, and so this is a huge problem for us when we cook animal protein. Um, because you're really destroying the protein chain. It's very, you know, it's very delicate. It's all these peptide bonds in there. And so you're making a mess out of it. And it's very inefficient. You have to eat that protein and then your body has to unravel all those, those amino acids and then you form them into human protein chains. So this is a very, very inefficient way uh, to get your food. And yet, you know, one of the biggest amounts of pushback I ever get is, you know, meat is healthy. My meat is healthy. My, I get grass fed from the farmers and my chickens from down the road and my eggs come from the farmer. You know, it's a better way. It's more improved. The stuff you get out in the stores now, especially the meat, uh, so contaminated, even the fish you're going to find, you know, maybe we eat sushi raw. It's very contaminated now. So, uh, you know, this is something that's just really, uh, um, doesn't belong in the body at all. I eat, I always say know the force, know the source of your food. So I got the summer here, and my garden's outside. That's what I've been eating from all summer. So I probably know now 80% of the food where it exactly comes from. My my buddy's got a big garden, you know, enormous amounts of tomatoes and peppers and all this stuff coming in. So I just make my my dinners out of that. Uh, and tonight, after we get off here in another 30, 40 minutes or whatever, when, I am, when I'm done working out, um, I'm going to go eat a big salad. And it's what I eat every single night. I eat a big salad. Now, there's all sorts of, you know, uh, cricket and a bunch of you guys out there make, make some fantastic raw food dishes. Um, you know, I, I'm, I actually, I, I'm a great cook, <laughs> ironically. I was born to cook. I was standing on a chair at four and a half years old, learning how to cook. I was cooking by myself at five o'clock in the or uh, by five years old at five thirty, six o'clock in the morning, I'd get up and eat and then I'd go watch my cartoons. So I was, I'm a fantastic cook, but I never cook, but I could make all these raw foods every once in a while. I do make one, a dish for myself, but in general, I'm just kind of want quick and dirty and me or quick and clean. And I make my salad and that's the easiest way for me to eat. And, uh, but whatever works for you is fine. Um, and then I always have my spirulina and chlorella with that. So going back to my cancer protocol, I want to cleanse the digestive tract of everything out there. And I want to kill everything. Uh, I call it tabla rasa. You're going to clean the slate. So, um, to do that, you're going to do, um, my, I have a, a parasite killer, uh, uh, I call it my care, parasite killer protocol. It's on my website. My website's watershed.net. And um, <clears throat> it's, I have a, one product that's called the parasite uh, killer formula. And that one is 13 different powders. Uh, and I have them in capsules. You could buy it and buy it in powder if you want. But every one of these powders has killing power, power to it. They all kill things. Uh, and in particular, bacteria, viruses, yeast, mold, and fungus, and parasites. And the best thing for parasites would be papaya seed powder. So, you, you, you know, if you know, you think you have pi uh, parasites, the best thing is uh, papaya, papaya seed powder. There's a few other ones out there. But you, what I want to do is kill everything in your digestive tract. Another thing I'm going to ask you to take is bismuth. Bis that's liquid. It's another one of my angstrom minerals. You're going to take about a capful. And this one you're going to swallow. Don't hold it in your mouth because that one is going to kill everything in the digestive tract. In particular, a bacteria that's called H. pylori, which uh, causes uh, stomach ulcers, as, as has been studies showing how bismuth kills that. Bismuth is what they get put in Pepto Bismol. And uh, so that's where that name gets that from Pepto Bismuth, the bismuth that they put in it. So that's just another. Uh, a mineral, very natural, but again, you're just going to take that. So you're going to, you, in the best time to do this, and by the way, I mentioned earlier briefly, the healthiest thing you can always do is fast, stop eating. You know, like when you get a, an infectious disease, you know, one of the things, reasons I was able to get through meningitis, which I mean, it's a killer, like at one point I could barely get out of bed. Any normal thinking person would have gone to the doctor or the hospital, but you know, not Dr. Bob, no, I got to I, I got to sit there and go through the whole thing because I really didn't think I had an, an infectious disease. And if I had known, I would have taken some silver. It would have knocked it right out. But I built up these antibodies. But fasting, you got to stop eating. You know, you get the you get any disease, you get this COVID, you get the stomach. If you get real sick, you, uh, you know, you go into the hospital, they're going to feed you. They're going to give you food. That's the first thing I'm hung. Okay, here's your here's your crappy uh, hospital food. Uh, I'll just let you know one thing. Again, my opinion. 
uh, hospital is one of the most dangerous places you could out, ever go into in your life. I'd rather walk through, uh, you know, the wrong part of New York City at uh, two o'clock in the morning than go to a hospital. I feel safer in, in a ghetto in New York. I, I lived in New York for many years, and uh, I'd rather do that than go to a hospital. I feel safer. I, that is really a dangerous place as a hospital um, for a whole, whole host of reasons, okay? So, by the way, in this book, what this book is about is half of my book it denounces the medical establishment and why you don't want to use them for disease and why you don't want to use them for any, you know, they really have never cured anything. Uh, they've they named one disease they've ever cured. Even, even these, you know, we always hear polio. We've got the, in, you know, even jo Jonas Salt said himself, uh, you know, I didn't, my vaccine actually in, extended the polio epidemic. It didn't cure it. He, he had admitted that himself. It's one of the reasons he didn't want to patent that uh that uh, that vaccine that he had developed because he knew it wasn't it was this was not what was happening polio was already going on, on its way out all infectious diseases have a, an arc to them they come in and they and they leave that's why the bubonic plague went away eventually because it, ha it has an arc they eventually people build up the immunity one of the reasons we've had so this covid lingering and lingering and lingering is because they didn't you know load it, let us go out and get herd immunity meaning get exposed to it build up the antibodies and and if, if you're old and you haven't lived on a raw food diet and you haven't taken care of yourself and uh, you're elderly, stay home and something like this. You should stay home. But the average person going out, especially children, the idea of a mask, a mask is just pure theater. It doesn't do anything for you. This is not a health device. This is something just to make you think you're doing something. And then they try to say, well, you know, your mask helps me. You, you take a vaccine. And just for the record, I, I wouldn't, I've taken vaccines in the past. I wouldn't take a vaccine if my life depended on it. I'll never take this vaccine coming out. This is just, you know, who knows what's in it? Well, they don't have to tell you what's in it. And because that be, they're protected by the Supreme Court. And they, and, and if you die, well, they, they're not going to get sued because they're protected by the su Supreme Court. And they decided that several years ago. So you can't go after them. Um, you know, they said, well, gosh, if we let people sue the vaccine manufacturers, they'll all be put out of business. Uh, oh, whatever, you know, I wouldn't take a vaccine under any circumstances. Um, I mean, aside from all the weird things they found in it, you don't know what's in that vaccine and you don't need it. You need to build the immune system. People need to get strong and not become weak through something like that. So I'm very, you know, very, uh, in, very much intent on telling people that you don't need to be taking these vaccines. You don't need to be wearing a mask around. The mask isn't going to do anything. You know, the N95 mask, the hole on that, let's just say is this big. The virus is this big compared to it. It just go right through that thing. It's, you know, and that's the best mask on the market, the N95. So this is not the answer to being safe. Being safe is building up your immune system. You can do that with silver. But again, you got to fast. So when you got can't say you got so oh, you got cancer, what do I do? Stop eating. Stop eating. It is the number one thing you can do is just stop eating and um, and let your body begin to, you know, it, to heal itself. When you start, when you fast, that gives your body a chance to rest, um, cleanse, and repair itself. And we never do that. People just keep eating meat, meal after meal after meal. Nothing ever clears out. And so you got to stop eating after a while. And every, every, every religion does this, you know, Christianity, we had Christ 40 days and fasted in the desert. And there isn't a, there isn't a, uh, any, any religion anywhere, even the ones you, maybe you believe in it, maybe you don't, they all talk about fasting and the incredible po powers of fasting. I call it the physician within is the fasting. So you clear your blood, you take uh, well, you take, as I said, you're going to take my parasite killer formula, 13 different powders that are all designed to kill everything in your digestive tract, liquid angstrom bismuth, make sure you stay totally hydrated. And, uh, and then uh, take silver, liquid angstrom silver, that's going to cleanse the blood as your blood is going to be full of bacteria, viruses, yeast, mold, and fungus. If you've got cancer, I guarantee it. And so you got to get those out of there. You got to clean your temple. This is the temple God gave you. I, one of my books I wrote is called um, God's Path of Disease-Free Living, What the Scriptures tell, Teaches About Health. And it's basically ba it's based off of, of um, you know, uh, John, um, Gospel of John uh, 20, 21. Uh, you know, he, he says, I, uh, Jesus said, 
I'll destroy this temple, rebuild it in three, three, in three days. And the temple he was referring to was his body. Well, this is your temple. And if you, if you got sick, it's because you put the wrong things in this temple. And, um, you know, if we, if you went to your church and you walked in and unlocked the doors and somebody had come in with garbage and thrown it all over the altar and it was all over the place and the seats, you'd run and get everybody in your church and start cleaning that up immediately. You know, the desecration that's been done to that. Well, what are you doing to your body when you're eating a Twinkie, when you're eating cookies, when you're eating Doritos, you're doing the same thing. You are, you are, um, you know, polluting your own temple. You're destroying your own health and you're, you're, you're destroying your own temple. And so you got to stop doing this. Um, you know, I tell people all the time, why raw fruits and vegetables? Well, God grew an apple. We made a frying pan and you cannot improve on God's creation that, uh, you know, uh, God grew that apple. That's, that's perfect. You can, you can make it taste better. You can make an apple pie. Um, you know, I just, a friend of mine, you probably know her, some of you, Miko, um, she, uh, she just sent me some recipes for um, raw apple pie because I, was, I went to one of her raw food uh, little demonstrations one time and she made this apple pie. It was the most delicious thing in like 10 minutes. I mean, I couldn't believe what I was, I was eating. It was just so delicious. So God grew an apple. But you and you can improve the taste, but you can't improve the apple. Just like, you know, I'm sitting here at my dad's uh, desk and it's a beautiful wooden desk. But, um, you know, we had to cut down a tree to make this desk. Well, you didn't improve the tree, you know, so it's a beautiful wooden desk. But, you know, you didn't improve that tree. So you can have, never improve on God's creation. It's always just exactly as it should be. And that's why you can't go wrong by eating any other wrong fruit and vegetable. No one ever, you know, I've heard people say this. I wanted a raw, a raw food diet and I uh, got very sick. No, you didn't get sick. You maybe felt sick because you were detoxifying, but you were not sick. You, you know, believe me, you, 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 you were detoxifying at the very most. So you will never get sick from eating a raw food and vegetable, vegetable of any kind, um, especially if it's not contaminated with something, which most aren't. Um, you know, I tell people, does it need, should it be organic? You know, well, I try to make, get as much organic stuff as I can during the winter. I do a lot of sprouting and I have, um, I learned a lot, some of that stuff from Hiawatha. I went down to creative health. They do a lot of sprouting down there. And, um, so these are powerful foods, you know, especially these little tiny seeds, uh, you know, mustard seeds and, uh, broccoli seeds and radish and, um, and alfalfa and red clover these are when you get them in the first three to five days these they're highly concentrated amounts of enzymes and organic chemical substances again that haven't been denatured or destroyed by cooking anytime you cook anything you, you destroy all the nutrients so you've taken it from a rejuvenating food that's alkalizing with powerful healing abilities uh, and you turn it into mere sustenance so you know like if you eat say they say broccoli is um, anti-cancer. Well, cooked broccoli is not, that's just a, a myth and it's completely, um, you know, it's completely wrong. If you cook anything, there's no, because it's the enzymes in the broccoli, it's the florophane and broccoli sprouts that makes it, there's several other enzymes in there that make those so healthy, but that, that in the first three to five days, you will find 50 times more sulforaphane than you will in an entire head of broccoli because it creates these chemical substances and these enzymes in the first few days of the sprout. And then it spreads out through the plant. So, you know, I, I, and as far as which plants, again, I have my favorites um, of, you know, I always make sure I have greens in my salad. That, that's the kind of the basis of, look, I have something called the raw food pyramid. It's in the back of my book, but my raw food pyramid shows you what, what do we need the most of? Well, water. So I kind of re redesigned this stupid food pyramid. They made it, it you know, there's just, <laughs> you know, you always see that food pyramid is, uh, is, uh, you know, um, is, um, you know, a little bit of eggs and not too much sugar and, and meats here, you know, the, the, the people from every single, um, um, you know, industry, the egg industry and the meat industry, they come in there and they fight with the FDA to get their place on the food pyramid. <laughs> it's like so, so stupid, you know, so um, it's called the food guide pyramid. Well, it's just a joke. And, but what you, so most of what you need is water. Next you need greens. 
So that's what I have a lot of bra and my, my favorite green happens to be arugula, but I do a lot of mustard green and spinach and, you know, I'll do parsley and cilantro, anything I can get my hands on. Any, any raw food is a good one for me. I try to just get variety. It's all about variety, variety, yeah. variety. Right. So going back to my cancer protocol, I'm going to, I'm going to destroy everything that's living in your digestive tract. And then we're going to follow up with a probiotic. Um, I happen to sell a really good one. It's uh, made with a strain of acidophilus called DE111. It's also got a fermented food in it. Um, it's a really, really good antibiotic, or pro, I'm sorry, probiotic. But I would uh, highly recommend you put a probiotic into your diet if you're not doing it already. And you take that maybe 20, 20, 20, 25 minutes before you eat. And then I always eat, a, I always take a digestive enzyme with that as well. But we're going to kill everything in the digestive tract and then repopulate it with the healthy bacteria. And, um, you know, how long can you go on my cancer protocol, the, the, you know, the, the beginning of it? Well, you know, if you can go 12 hours without eating and then, um, you know, if you've already eaten something, all what everything I'm telling you here, don't do it then. It's a waste of time because you, it's just the food's just going to absorb it. It's not going to have anything. You got to have, you got to be fasting. You got to clear the blood. So first thing in the morning, say, get up and do all this, and then, uh, then take the silver. And uh, again, you don't have to worry about. You can take them all at the same time. Um, I have another uh, product that actually uh, I own this product with the inventor of it. It's called the Dissolve Bioactive Silicate. So bioactive silicate is a, a, a crystalline form of uh, silicon and uh, it, it kills, it, it kill, removes uh, um, bacteria from biofilm from the body. Biofilm is that slippery stuff that you feel on everything where it's just kind of a bacterial film on that. If you've got cancer, I guarantee you, you've got biofilm throughout your body. And then nanobacteria. Nanobacteria accumulates in the arteries and, um, and can exactly, actually cause a heart attack. People think that's plaque. A lot of the quote unquote plaque we see in our blood is really nanobacteria that's built up over time and closed off that artery. So now you're going to, you've got heart problems. Um, and I will just say, I still run a six minute mile. I'm 64. I just turned 64 last week and um, I'm running a six minute mile and it doesn't kill me to run it. I, I mean, I, I know I could train and get myself down to a a 530 mile or even a five minute mile if I really was dedicated and I really wanted to do it but you know again for me exercise is just about health um, I've always exercised I've always been a runner but to me as I said it's just about being healthy so I make I do it every single day and I'll just tell you right now five days out of seven I don't I don't want to do it but I go out and I do it anyway, I either go out running, but you know, I got my elliptical downstairs. So I can work out here in Michigan right through the winter and everything. And uh, I never miss, I never miss unless I, you know, have an event going on. Um, and even then, if I know I have something going in the evening, I'll work out in the morning, working out very, very, um, you know, important course is a huge connection between uh, physical exercise and your brain being healthy. Um, there's a, a, bar, a book I like to re reference all the time called Spark. And uh, I can't remember the name, it was a medical doctor actually wrote that. And he'll tell you there'd be so many studies about people who don't exercise versus people who do. Uh, even in high school, you'll see the, the kids that go out for you know sports and stuff, they generally have a higher grade point average. Uh, it's a big connection between working out and the brain. You've got to work it, keep that brain going. And, um, you know, I've got all sorts of products for your brain. I've got things that help you with memory. I've got a type of magnesium that will help you, you know, that will help you keep away from dementia, things like Alzheimer's, that kind of a thing. So uh, I got other products that feed the brain, choline, alpha, alpha GPC is a good, is the best thing. That's kind of the rock star of of these cholines because your brain that uh, choline's a fat your brain's mostly fats and acids so i you know i've got all these herbs macuna is my number one herb um, for longevity it produces uh, hgh in the brain it's the only herb in the world that does that but um you know i'm, I'm clear thinking uh, i don't have brain fog uh, I don't wake up exhausted, you know, um, I, I, you know, I'm not one and I'm not a really an early riser type of guy. And but I don't wake up and I just drag through and I drag through everything. The only time I'm tired is if I didn't get enough sleep the night before. And of course, that is important. Um, so at any rate, my, so going back to my cancer protocol, first of all, we're going to cleanse everything in the digestive tract, we're going to cleanse the blood. And then the next thing is, 
um, once you begin to eat or whatever, we're going to detoxify the body from inert uh, substances su such as heavy metals, herbicides, pesticides. Um, you know, every time you go up and fill you, you up your car with gasoline, you smell it. If you smell the, um, the gasoline, well, that you're breathing in benzene, trihalomethanes, uh, you know, arsenic, all sorts of stuff. You're breathing it right in. It's going right into your bloodstream. And so you want, you know, you want to, um, uh, you want to get that out of there. So, you know, and like you ride behind a bus and you know, whatever a truck and you smell all the fumes and everything, uh, you know, somebody who's a smoker unfortunately, and you got to live with that person or you smell smoke all the time. This is, um, you know, stuff goes right into the lungs, you know, you're breathing it right in, you know, people get can lung cancer, you don't usually hear about stage one, two or three lung cancer, it's always stage four. So it just comes on immediately. And once you get lung cancer, anything with the lungs is extremely difficult to heal. I recommend natokinase for that. That's a systemic enzyme. Um, and there's all sorts of things here. I'm not really, I'm just kind of going over the, the, the not the details of my protocol, but just the basics of it. You know, de killing everything in the digestive tract, cleansing the blood, and then going in and detoxifying the body. And I have all sorts, you know, chlorella and spirulina, these two types of algae that are 60% protein. And like I have that with everything I eat. I have a small, if you take a small handful with every meal, that's all the protein you'll need for your uh, for your meal. If you want to eat meat, fish, eggs, or dairy, it's strictly for the taste. So you got to, you, you don't need that. The only reason we eat those foods, because we like the, like the taste of them. Well, you know, wouldn't it be great for me if I, if, if a nice giant pizza were healthy, <laughs> but it's not, I, you know, nice beer, you know, or a big glass of wine or something and a, and a pizza. And that's, that's the path to health. Well, that's not the path to health, unfortunately, because as I said earlier, God grew an apple. So stick with what God did because he never makes mistakes. You can never improve on what he did on. And all you can do is bring it down in value. So, um, you know, and I talk a lot about God in this book and I talk about how, how atheistic and how, how the scientific community has really just, they don't want to even admit God exists because they don't need him. And they kind of almost, you know, chide their colleagues for bringing up God or something like that. Those, those are just your beliefs. So um, there's a great book. Um, uh, I can't think of the title, but the guy's name is Berlinski. And he wrote this book and I quote him several times in my book. But uh, this guy is just, uh, you know, he's, a, he's Jewish and he's not a religious guy at all. And um, he says, I don't ever go to temple. I never, you know, I believe in God, but that's it. But he says, you look at the scientific community, they're a bunch of atheists. I mean, they, they decided, the scientific community decided to leave God out of the equation many, many years ago. And it, it's one, you know, you take somebody like Newton or Galileo, these were men of God. I mean, they were God believers. I mean, they, they, you look at their writings, you know, they, all these scientists of back in the middle ages and all these things, uh, they really were, everyone believed in God. Um, and, uh, you know, we talk about today's uh, Christopher Columbus Day. I don't know what they're calling it anymore. That was a man, he was a man of God. Not a, we're all imperfect, but um, he was a very staunch Catholic and a man of God. And, you know, that was just the way it was back then. And so this idea of uh, kind of in the 20th century is when all these atheists got into the scientific community and, um, and sort of, sort of, you know, took over. And so they left everyone out. And this guy wrote this book, Berlinski. I, I can't think of the title of his book right off the top of my head. Um, but uh, I think it's called uh, something delusion because it was the God delusion. So he rebuts a lot of these atheists and he does such a great job. These atheists that write book after, after book, after book, after book and all, you know, about saying there's no God. How, how many books you got to write to say there's no God? I mean, it's ridiculous. How many, how long does it take? I could, you know, it seems like you could do that in like maybe like three or four pages, you know, but they write books after books after books on how, why there's no God. And I don't know what they're going to replace it with, but that's the scientific community. So that's, that tells you everything you need to know about those people, you know, what their beliefs are, you know, and uh, because you'll see where they're coming from, you know, the medical establishment is always looking for the, they, if you're looking for the, the, the criminal that committed the crime, you got to be looking for the clues in the right places. If you're looking over here and all the clues are over here, you're not going to catch your criminal criminal. And if you, and same with these doctors, if they're looking over here for a cure for disease, cause you go to the doctor's office, what do they do? They give you a clipboard and fill out your medical history. 
Okay. Who had cancer? And the minute you get cancer, they're going to say, okay, who had, well, cancer runs in your family. Heart disease runs in your family. Okay. What else runs? This runs in your family. All this dietary habits run in our family. As I said before, we live on, we're a meat and potato society. And I've traveled all over the world. And, uh, you know, I love India. And, uh, you know, but they live in a curry diet over there, totally different foods. Uh, you know, the most exotic foods I ever ate was in Korea. I mean, they're totally different than us. We don't eat any of the foods. We eat a lot of seaweed and, uh, you know, just totally different diet. So when we sit down at the table, we don't have, you know, with our families, we, we don't have, well, mommy's eating a steak tonight and dad's having, you know, hot dogs and this. And then uh, Jennifer, little Sally here, she's eating her curry foods and you're eating your Chinese foods. We all eat the same foods. And that's why all disease runs within families, but it runs within our diet. So it appears so. So to the to the to the medical establishment, it appears as though, you know, disease runs in our genes. And, um, but, you know, it appears to me that the sun revolves around the earth. OK, but it turns out we're the sun is just sitting there and we're spinning. And that was an argument settled long ago. So just because it's something appears one way doesn't necessarily mean it is that way. So uh, cleanse the body of all the uh, bacteria, yeast, mold, and fungus, tabla rasa, clean the slate, then go into the heavy metal, det or the, I mean, the uh, detoxification of inert substances, heavy metals, herbicides, pesticides, all the stuff that disease lives on. And then begin, you know, hydrate your body and you'll begin to get, because what you've done, if you've got cancer, it's because you created this environment within. You, if, you, if you've got cancer, you know two things. You know that you're acidic, or any disease, any disease you have, you know that you're acidic and you know that you're toxic. You're full of things that don't belong in the body. You've created this, this acidic, toxic environment within your body, and now you're wide open to any disease, um, whether, it's, um, you know, whether it's arthritis, high blood pressure, uh, cancer, you, know, you name it. It doesn't matter what it is. It's, um, it's, you, you've got, you, you know, and this is why you see, you know, you don't know why what happened, but you look at two people, one family, little Johnny got cancer and then little Sally didn't get it. Well, you know, little Johnny just got, got unlucky. Well, I don't know what he was exposed to, um, that gave Johnny the cancer, but not Sally. Maybe he, his mother, you know, he got it when it was, um, he was in a fetus, and so he was exposed to, she was exposed to toxins and he was exposed to these toxins, or maybe it was he got into a place and got into some herbicides or pesticides or somehow, or whatever. Maybe he's eating a slightly different diet. Maybe he's eating more of this kind of junk food or whatever. He's eating a lot of meat. Maybe Sally's not eating as much, but that it's all comes down to your diet. Um, and, you know, there's so many times, uh, I can't remember the woman's name now, but she, uh, you probably would know her. She's a raw foodist down in Atlanta. And I interviewed her in my, my, what well, was a podcast? It was, it was just called the radio show back when I did it back in the early 2000s. I didn't even call it a podcast back then, but I interviewed her for a time, a few times. And she said, everybody, my, my family got breast cancer. So now I got breast cancer and they were just, okay, no, it's your turn. That's your turn. We all get we all get this. So you're just going to get it too. And she says, I don't think so. I, I'm going to, I don't, I got to do something else. So she went out and she researched and she found the raw food diet and she went on it. So I'm again, very key on the raw food diet. That's the biggest thing. Everything I tell you to do basically is pretty easy, except change your diet, Ch change the foods that you're eating. That's the most difficult thing because you know, we love these foods. We're attached to these foods. I mean, I love pizza, but I stay away from it because it's not healthy. And, um, and I love, you know, I would love eating a burger, you know, but I don't do that because I know it's not healthy and all these other foods, all these other cooked foods, um, you know, it's kind of not, it's more difficult for other people than to go to a social events than me. Cause usually they are looking at me like, what, why aren't you eating our food? But, um, you know, uh, um, you go to the average, you know, picnic or, cookout or you know you're going to be the only one there unless you you know i go to my church uh, you know we the men get together called men's group once a month and they eat all their stuff and if somebody brought some salad or something i'll have some otherwise you know i might go cheat with a cookie but that's about it i'm not going to sit there and eat any other and they it's all home cooked food it, um, ribs and chicken and they bring in they're all germans they bring in all this sort of german food it's all home cooked it's i'm sure it's delicious but i'm not going to eat it because that's not the path to health 
and it's very difficult to change your diet. And we learn about these dietary habits, of course, right from birth. And we, we, learn, we learn about eating cooked foods from the people we trust the most, our parents, our grandparents. And sometimes, you know, um, they, they have some very powerful psychological, um, you know, attractions to us. I mean, we remember grandma's Christmas cookies because um, it was Christmas and it was so happy and all the family got together and there were such delicious cookies. We don't remember grandma's um, liver and onions um, because that was a bad memory, but these are powerful psychological um, connections that we have and they really are very difficult to break. I will mention, um, you know, we're just addicted. Everyone's addicted to cooked foods. I'm, I'm a dairyaholic. I mean, it's, it's very difficult for me to always avoid dairy completely because I grew up on dairy. There isn't a dairy product in the world that I don't love to eat, um, so, but I know it's bad for me. So I stay away from it. And I will say it's the number one thing. If you have cancer, don't eat dairy. I mean, I've seen people that uh, doctors, medical doctors actually telling people to eat more dairy when they get sick. Well, there's something in dairy called IGF insulin like growth factor and that's what you grow that's what happens in your body when you grow and you're a little kid and then it kind of shuts off well when you take igf when you got cancer well that just makes the cancer go crazy so they get some very very bad advice um you know in from medical doctors i, I in my book you read my book uh, I met a couple of medical doctors, cancer researchers, the top people in their craft. I met them in Baltimore at John Hopkins, near John Hopkins at this, ho at this one hotel where all the doctors stay. It's called the Marriott Water uh, Waterfront Hotel. And it's right next to John Hopkins. Well, you know, they, they were very nice guys, a couple of Jewish guys. And they were, one was a Jewish, one, one, one was a cancer research and the other was a medical doctor. And they were actually that one of their close friends just won the Nobel prize for cancer research and everything. And they say, what do you do? I said, I'm a naturopath. And they said, Oh, a naturopath. What's it? You know, they looked at each other. They didn't know what a naturopath was. If I just said a plumber, Oh, they know what a plumber is, but a naturopath, they had no clue. So they, they don't know anything about what I do. They're more than happy to denounce it. And when I began to tell them that all disease, you know, cancer comes from toxicity, the guy just said, well, you know, you know, isn't that true? Isn't that, I said, I said, isn't that true? And he goes, we're not quite there yet. Was, quote unquote, we're not quite there yet. They're never going to be there because they're not looking in the right place. They don't think toxicity has anything. If you look at a tumor, a tumor is, you know, something that's weird happening in the body. And so there's something going on there and um, your body's making all these cells and it won't turn it off and it can become cancerous where your body's trying there's something going on so your body's trying to wall that off from the rest of the body so it doesn't spread and if it becomes cancerous that's why um, you know and you see these people um, getting you know breast cancer and then okay I got the breast cancer gene so they're taking the breasts off mastectomy and I got the the you know the the uterus gene uh, you know and uh and so I'm going to have my, my, you know, my tubes will be removed or whatever. And they're just lopping off pieces that Angela, Angelina Jolie did this. Uh, there's many people that just had their breasts removed because they found the cancer. I don't know what they're going to do when they find the brain cancer gene. I guess it's, you know, off with the head because what else can you do? So, um, you know, this is obviously, it's just not the, not the answer to start removing body parts because you have this gene. This is just ridiculous. And, uh, you know, you go into the hospital and of course, I mean, you look at chemotherapy, chemotherapy is kind of where it was in the 1960s. It really hasn't changed much at all. It's the same thing. They've got, the only thing that's improving our death rates aren't as bad. Well, that's because they can catch the cancer so much easier or so much sooner. The, the, the sensitivity of the equipment is amazing. Um, you know, the, the stuff they can do with the medical, you know, with their equipment it is, you know, in detection, it's, it's astounding. I mean, I go in for, for blood work from time to time just so I can see where I am. And of course, it always comes back perfect. It's always right in the range. Nothing's out of the range or anything. And, um, you know, and I always tell you something, you know, I'm nobody special. Anybody can do what I'm doing. It. I'm just doing it. So I'm not like some special person. And I did want to mention before, you know, what do you do? How do you get away from these foods? Um, there's a great book and some of you guys, some of you might know her and I know uh, cricket, you know, her, but uh, it's uh, Victoria Botenko. She wrote a book called uh, 12, 12 steps to the raw food diet, something close to that. And I mention it in my book, you know, because it's an addiction. We're addicted to this stuff and you have to use this 
what do I do when I'm addicted to alcohol? What do I do when I'm addicted to drugs? I'm addicted to heroin. What do I do? Well, you know, you go on this 12 step program. Well, she said, let's go on the same 12 step program for raw foods and get out I mean, for cooked foods and get out of those and go to a, uh, and do a raw food diet. So it was a great book. It was very well written. Um, um, and so I always like to, you know, tell people this is, you know, point to that book as one of the best books I've read on the raw food diet is, is that 12 steps to the raw, to raw foods, Victoria Botenko. She wrote a lot of other books, but that's the really the one I cite the most. So, um, um, that's kind of my health protocol in a nutshell. Um, I've talked for maybe half an hour or something here, so an maybe hour. a little longer. And uh, <laughs> so maybe you guys got some questions, but this is what I do. And I know your body can cure itself. I got bumper stickers. Your body is capable of healing itself of any disease. And that's the truth. So if you're sick, it's because it's your fault. You made yourself sick. And um, that's a mes message not of chiding you, but it's a message of empowerment because you got yourself into this situation and you can get yourself out. Okay. So can, can you hear us now, Bob? Can you hear me? Yeah. Thank um, you very so, much. Yeah, that was awesome. Um, okay. So I found two books. Is it David Berlinski? Yeah, David Berlinski. Yeah. I found a couple books by him The Devil's Delusion, Atheism, That's the one. and Its Scientific Pretensions. That's the one. Yeah, yeah, Devil's Delusion. Okay. I quote that a whole bunch of times in my book. Okay. And, uh, you know, he didn't, he didn't make any fans in the, uh, scientific world when he wrote that book, cause they really came after him, but he's, That's, he's not I a real religious in the guy. Chat, you guys, if you want to look at the, yeah, look in your, yeah, chat. click, click the, click the second little, uh, it's voice. not the same on everybody's is it? Oh, okay. go to chat. And you yeah. can see it. All right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Devil's Anybody Delusion. That's questions? a great book. And okay. very well. He wrote that's 10, 12 years ago he wrote that. But the truth is the truth. It never gets old. So the title is in is right there in the chat. So yeah. I think you yeah. Yeah, devil's for delusion. Putting it. Yeah. But I mean that just shows you where they you know, where these scientific guys are just a great great way to begin to see the medical establishment. It just they're atheist. They're, they have an atheistic approach. They don't want to hear about God. And they just very dismissive and anybody who wants to bring that up. Go pray. Anybody else have questions? I have a question. Uh, yes. Yes. Can you, Bob, go over again the liquid silver and what other products that we should buy to uh, clean out our digestive system? I didn't get a chance to write it down. You'll okay, have to well, watch first of all, the replay. Um, that's a good it, question. So uh, Bob, I will say no this. First of all, re repeating all that, she can watch the Yeah, replay. no, I, I won't go through everything. Go to my website, watershed.net. Okay. And then you Thank go you. up to the top, it'll say cancer protocol. And when you go there, okay. you'll see, it'll say, it'll say parasite killer protocol. You click that and there's all the products, all the links and the exact what to do and how to take it and what to do when you, you know, when you get up in the morning, what do I do? Because people say, okay, you gave me all this stuff to eat. Now, what do I do? So I have a daily routine and it's in the back of my book, in the very back of my book, but just as daily routine, here's what I would do. So I tell you how to fast and which products to take and everything. So I, I, and I didn't really mention all of them by, by any yeah. means. There's a whole bunch yeah. of things. Okay. I would okay. recommend. Um, Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. And then, and then another thing is my YouTube, I mentioned it as Watershed 11, or you could go to Dr. Bob McCauley or Watershed 11. And everything, I go through my entire book, like the last nine or 10 videos I've made are all my, all my cancer protocol. And I go through the entire book, uh, sort of, you know, section by section telling you what it's about and everything. So my main thing is just uh, to get the information out there to people. So you can watch my videos and get everything out of, about it. You can listen to the book, you could buy the book, but it's all on my website. It's all, uh, you know, there's nothing that you won't see here that I won't have on those videos or in my website. And that's okay, Watershed cool. 11 again. That's cool. Did someone else have a question? Yes, um, I'd like to have a question. This is Hiawatha. Can anybody hear me? Hi, Hi Hiawatha. Yes, we I've can. I've been hear. knocked off the line so many times. Anyway, what I'd like to know, uh, Dr. Bob, is how often can you take the uh, 
the Silver 500, Anstrom Minerals. Yeah, so um, this is what I would recommend for any infectious disease, whether you got shingles, whether you've got, because that's a virus, whether you've, I want you to go through my cancer, my parasite killer protocol. And um, so if you're really sick with something like maybe you have, you know, the COVID, you could take that silver two or three times a day, but oh. and as a maintenance dosage, I mean, I take it every week and I haven't been sick. I haven't been sick since I had meningitis. I mean, and I didn't sick, but I hadn't been sick before that probably 10 years. So that's why I was not really prepared for this. But, you know, I figured God did that to me for a reason. I mean, I was really in bad shape. And so I, when, when I was in China and I took a cap full of the, the silver, I said, you know, wow, this didn't happen for no reason. Something caused, well, you know, I hate some, to this you, is giving me for get something. Some information. I want to know what, cons what does the a parasite protocol consist of? Um, and that's what website. I went over and it's on my website, you know, the parasite killer formula that I have, it's the bismuth, the silver, the, uh, the, the dissolve, uh, um, anyway, it's on the website. Silicate. Okay, I, I'll check the website. Yeah. yeah. Just go up there, go up to the top. You'll see cancer protocol, click that, and then you'll see everything. And there's a detox protocol. And that's for the inert things. And then the parasite protocol, which is get the living things. We've got to cleanse the body, got to cleanse the temple, kill everything, put in the friendly bacteria. And then, then we start getting all these other bad things out of there. Heavy metals, herbicides, pesticides, and all the stuff that accumulates. See, when you eat a raw food, they don't displace their toxins, even if they are very, are, they're toxic. Whereas if you eat a cooked food, all those toxins, all those toxins are going to be displaced into the body, all of them. That's the way it works. Well, I, I, I thank you so much for the information, but I've got to get off the phone now because I have another conference call. Okay, so thank okay. you. All right, so Hiawatha. Great to hear from thank you. you. You Hi, keep Hi, going and going. Happy birthday. Thank you. Brian, right. I had a question. Yeah, you. I know this is, you mentioned sprouts, and um, I've been trying to grow my broccoli sprouts, but they, I, I mean, I but I got about five years ago and those things would not sprout. Do you have any recommendation? I know that's yeah, maybe so, not I mean, did. they, they won't last uh, too long. You know, when you get to be five years, you know, I like the idea of putting them in the freezer or, or especially like a cold place, cold dark, don't leave them upstairs or anything, get into a cold dark place when you buy some. Um, I go to, uh, there's what's maybe somebody knows there's a place down in um, Eaton Rapids that does the sprouts um, or broken? seeds I should say the seeds in Ferris the Farms what is it do you need Ferris Farms yeah Ferris Farms now that's just one good place so I, I get I got like I get like five they sell bulk you know so I get like five pounds at a time. They kind of took away some of their seeds. They're not doing as many. But then I go to Sprout House uh, or uh, Sprout People. That's another go. There's one called Sprout Lady. And, um, you know, again, I'm, it's all about variety. So I do the more easier ones. There's some that you do on terracotta, which is like the, uh, you know, the clay. Chia. Uh, and yeah. Things like, like the, the Chia Pet, you know. <laughs> so we had the Chia and flax and arugula they got this kind of this meniscus this gel that kind of goes and you put it around there and you grow them that way um but uh yeah you know if they're not sprouting just go get yourself some new seeds i always get organic ones because they're really cheap i mean you uh, i mean i i got these sprouters and i'm doing um every day i'll start a new little low thing of them and so i get a whole thing of sprouts like this big and that probably costs like five cents maybe maybe five cents i mean it's really the cheapest way to be healthy is sprouts and i do that all through the winter and that my garden's in the summer my sprouting's in the winter so that's what i would do and um it's cheap and you know just put it on your foods put it on your salads you know, even if it's a cooked food, you know, let it cool down so it doesn't destroy the enzymes and put it on those foods. Okay, thanks. Yeah, I was just surprised because yeah. I hadn't opened it, but it was it's not in a refrigerator. So yeah, mine, so five mine did the same sprouts, thing I got some years it. ago. And, <laughs> really? you know, uh, you know, you just yeah. can't keep them too long. Okay, yeah. 
Okay, that's good to know. Thank you. I appreciate everything sure. you taught tonight. Yeah, great. I, well, I, thank I you, Bob. That. I appreciate okay. you being on tonight. Yeah, we're, we're going to re it's been recorded. So we'll send out the um, we'll send out the replay to the um, the email list. I'll put it up yeah. on YouTube. And um, if you want to copy it to your YouTube, Bob, you can do that, too. So, yeah, I will. And, yeah. you know, uh, just a plug here for Moselle. Uh, she's got a group. Yeah. And um, she's still getting I did a talk for her a while ago. And um, she's still going strong. And uh, I saw her not too long ago. I forget where, what, some kind of meeting or whatever. But uh, I think she came up to Lansing. But yeah. she's still doing the raw food down there. And she's, she's getting the she's group. Starting, and, yeah, she's starting an online class mm -hmm. here in not too distant future. So if you want to know about that, just reach out to me and I'll send you the details. Okay, yeah, absolutely. I want to hear email, about everything that um, anybody's doing. Ago, so. And uh, yeah, I haven't heard from Janice Welsh in a while, but I know she's still making and and uh, yeah. and Danielle, and they're still doing a lot of raw foods. And Daniel comes yeah. in the store every once in a while, and um, you know they continue on because once you get into the raw food lifestyle, you get locked into it. At least that's yeah. the way it was yeah, for me. That's right. You know, you you never lose your taste for cooked foods. You know, this idea. I just don't want it anymore. I, I don't want a lot of the stuff that I used to eat, but. Yeah, like I said, I was born to cook. I, I mean, I became a vegetarian when I was about 22. And so I learned all these vegetarian cooking dishes. I mean, I could make your uh, lentil loaf instead of a meat loaf and make it taste like a meat loaf. And I learned all that stuff. But to do what Cricket's doing and some other like Danielle, there's some really great, you know, Miko, uh, Miko Folsom. She's down in Ann Arbor. She's got a thing going now called the Dandelion Raw wild cafe i think it's called or raw, raw wild dandelion cafe or something she, she's starting a catering business and still a raw foodist so um you know we i've known some great people and great and they just make delicious things you come out of one of these raw food potlucks and we we don't get together we like used to but i mean you're full and you don't you're not stuffed like it's turkey day and you just feel great you just digest mm -hmm. your food and it's all these yep. amazing raw foods yep. And cricket was one of the best. Oh, thanks. she had the the the, <laughs> the raw. Let me tell you, you try her fettuccine, okay? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was good, Some good stuff. That. I'll I'm see. Yeah. I'm still remember that. And the pizzas. <laughs> now, uh, Moselle can make the pizza. And Moselle wow. made the pizzas. Yeah, yeah. He's great. Yeah, we're we're gonna right. get together for Hiawatha's birthday, and never happened. But um, yeah, so we'll still have to do that. Well, thanks everyone. Have a great evening. Okay. We'll send you the replay. Yeah. Okay. Thank Best you. of health, everybody. Stay okay. healthy. Now you know where to come and go to my website and um, 